Are you meeting Susan again? Yes! I am super, super excited to tell you that I just booked my next plane ticket to Malaysia. So if you happen to see us like walking around, stop and say hi. A couple folks have recognized Susan just like on the streets and said hey to her and it makes her day. She'll tell me all about it. So yes. And with that piece of exciting news, let's jump into this fun, pleasant Q&A. Politics? Let's just say I hope it's apparent in my life and actions. Although granted, I still have a great deal to learn and change about myself. Uh, so let's... Yeah, let's just say that for now. How about that? <laughs> Talking politics on the internet. Always a great idea. What was the biggest fight you and Susan ever had? And how did you guys tackle the problem together? Jeez, these questions. Uh, honestly, the biggest, like, fight I can think of has led to me learning that Susan really does not appreciate it when I make poop jokes while she happens to be eating. Even while she's eating chili! You know, the food that is the most conductive to diarrhea-related jokes? They're right there! It's so easy. <sighs> but because I guess I love Susan more than I enjoy quality humor, I... I mostly refrained. Mostly. Was I how you expected in person after all these years? This was asked by an internet friend who I only just met in real life a few months ago. And honestly, my question to you is, was I, am I the same as you thought I was going to be in real life? Like, I'm always kind of afraid that I unconsciously put on a front for the camera. Like, this unsustainable persona, you know? Which is stupid, because, like, I don't think that I do, other than being a little bit louder or enunciating my words more properly. But I just, I guess I always have this fear in the back of my mind that I'm doing it without even realizing it. And then the people that know me in real life, when they come, like, when they see one of my videos, they all silently judge me. But also to answer your question, no, you are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> How do you feel about friends getting married and having kids and stuff? Do you feel old? I guess it's like this pressure on my mind that I've kind of like believed all of my life that marriage is this incredibly like somber and serious thing that I am privileged to even be allowed to experience at some point in my life and I need to be incredibly serious about every part of it. But to be honest, like the most I guess liberating thing is as I've gotten older and seen like my friends get married and start their married lives together, it's the realization that married life and marriage and weddings are what you make of them. Literally earlier this week, I attended a wedding of some friends on a beach and it was super low key because everybody there was just their friends and there was no pressure. We were all there to support our friends and we love them. And so whenever something went wrong, because something always goes wrong during a wedding, instead of like gasps of shock and horror, everybody laughed and cheered because it was, we all got together to have a good time and to celebrate. And that's really what it was. I mean, yes, marriage is an important thing and a very serious decision to make about like your life. It is literally life changing, but it's that way because it's exciting and a new chapter in your life that opens doors to new opportunities and fresh experiences. So, that's fantastic! <laughs> Although I will say it's a little bit weird when you realize you are the same age as your parents were when you were made. No pressure. <laughs> Would you say your internet friendships slash relationships are as strong or stronger than IRL ones? Honestly, I've started to see less and less in the quality of the friendship. I mean, aside from like not being able to invite your friends over to play board games in your living room. Although, to be fair, you can like have online games done over, you know, Discord calls, so. But to be honest, like, my goal with making an internet friend is to make them into an IRL friend at some point. And yes, yeah, sometimes circumstances make it so you aren't able to ever meet this person in real life, and they're, like, forever going to be an internet friend. But remember that you are interacting with another person. Like, the internet is just the string in between the two cans that you guys talk to each other with. Unless you're being catfished, I guess. But granted, that's just my experience. Chicken or tomato soup? Well, both are fantastic receptacles for noodles, 
I mean, the superior milk of the cereal of dinner, weird metaphor, it's gotta go to chicken. Chicken noodle soup. I mean, you know I'm right. What are you gonna be for Halloween? Alone. Sleeping. <laughs> Would you rather be stuck in the front row of a TikTok concert or stuck in the bathroom next to somebody you've always admired? You, you jerk. <laughs> you said that because I've been in that second situation. I know how awkward and bad it is. And so I 100% would choose the TikTok thing because I, okay. I unironically love TikTok and genuinely think it is as good, if not funnier than Vine. I know, I know, controversial opinion alert. What? Sure, there's stuff that you might find cringy on there, but how we, have we forgotten how bad Vine genuinely was at first? The only Vines that we remember in the year of our Lord 2019 are ones that have rose to the top, if you will. It's the same thing as how people say like, music back decades ago used to be so much better. No, it's objectively not true, and just kind of silly, to think that every piece of music composed at some arbitrary time in the past was perfect and wonderful, and then at some unknown date, for some unknown reason, like a virtual flip was switched, and now all songs are crap. There just hasn't been enough time to filter out the good modern music from the bad. Yet. I guarantee you, on my life, that like 70 years from now, we're gonna all be missing the good old days of the 2000s when music had soul and actually meant something. Looking back on like, Usher. <laughs> that was a tangent that did not need to happen, but did anyways story of my life. Plus, I honestly just like find Gen Z humor better than millennial humor. Oh! <laughs> Favorite video you've made in 2019 so far? Probably... Oh. What other videos have I made this year? Probably the one about like, you know, struggling with the feelings of guilt continuously because, I don't know, I was a lot more real in that than normal and I hope I can connect with someone that's going through the same thing. Such a boring answer. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Or the making the barbecue chicken on the grill, because that was fun. Okay, so for how long are we supposed to do that? I don't know, and I'm well, using well, let's turn it my, off. I'm using my phone to record this. Okay, <laughs> the same phone that I should be using to, you know, check the recipe. Jalapenos or tomatoes. What kind of horrible, evil person would force a mere mortal such as myself to conjure the mental experience of imagining both of these horrid monstrosities at the same time. One day you shall have to answer for your sins. But probably jalapenos, because they burn a lot, but tomatoes just are the devil's warts. Ah. Also, if you were suddenly zapped backwards in time, 50 years or more, with no chance of coming back, what era would you want to end up in and why? That's a really terrifying thought for me because of the incredibly like intense rate of increase of general human quality of life in like modern history. Like if you've had, you know, certified pure water recently, then you're living in luxury that most of humans didn't have access to. I do not want to take a microscope to water of, you know, 100 or 200 years ago. If you are using air conditioning, you're living better than kings probably did. There's no plus to me. There's literally only downgrading my life. So I guess I would choose the time closest to modern time. Shoot me back to the 70s, I guess. Fine. I'm not going to enjoy the racism though. Speaking of which, is there any point to arguing about politics online? I've actually found my personal politics being challenged by opinions that I've heard online that I never would have encountered in my personal physical bubble, which I think is good. Now granted, this is obviously limits as to what is defined as debatable. Like for example, if you happen to think that you know, someone that just so happens to have not been born looking or feeling exactly like you shouldn't be counted as human and shouldn't have the freedoms and rights that we give every human. But besides that, I do think that if your argument can't withstand the stress of being tested, then there's a reason for that. Please don't kill me, internet.
If you could banish one trend from the internet, what would it be? Ironic racism as a pushback against the general trend of love and acceptance of others? Or the unironic usage of <laughs> Why do you keep your hair long? And would you ever cut it? Honestly, the real answer is I just like how it feels. You know, my mom liked my hair being cut short for all of my life. And now that I finally have free agency, like the feeling of being able to run my fingers through my hair is an experience that I'm still not used to. And it still feels really novel and cool. So the day that I'm finally over it, I'll head right to the barbers and pull a Tom Holland. <laughs> what do you think is the perfect age to get married and have kids? When you and your partner are both in agreement that now is the right time and that you both are ready mentally, financially, and physically. And to add to the child aspect, that you both will be able and willing to give your kid the love, attention, care, and support that they will need. Period. Is that how you pronounce that? Stan Twitter, I'm trying to understand you. <laughs> Favorite music genre? I actually really enjoy hip hop, which seems to surprise some people, but I, it's a, it's a general rule, listen to music to like pump myself up when I'm feeling kind of, unmotivated or uninspired and I don't know like the beats and the just the general vibe and flow of the music really helps me get into that vibe and flow if that makes any sense it just kicks me up on my feet when I need it I may or may not have been listening to Kanye while setting this set up do you ever regret dating Susan or like have you ever lost feelings for her this is a very interesting question honestly no, I don't regret dating her, although I'm gonna take this opportunity to slightly spin and say I do, however, not like the circumstances that our relationship happens to be in. Like, despite it being such an obvious, like, influencing factor on these videos, I really, 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 really do not like a long-distance relationship. It sucks. The struggling to fight for the relationship, like having to stay up really late at night or wake up super early before the sun rises in the morning just to be able to talk to the other person. Those are sacrifices that we both have to make because of the way that the stupid time zones happen to align or not align at all. It's a sacrifice that necessarily demands itself from both of us in order to make this relationship successful. But the relationship, the chance to be with her is worth it. It's like I'm hanging on to a prize tied to the end of a rope, and that rope is currently dragging me through the mud. Yes, it sucks that I'm gonna have to deal with mud everywhere and getting slightly scraped up, but like the prize that I'm holding on to is worth it. Have you ever had a feeling that some otherworldly creature is stalking you for who knows why and you felt like it would kill you in a slow, painful death? Yeah, I like sandwiches. You know, I made this tea on this desk fully intending to drink it while recording this for you and completely forgot until now and it is very cold. Oops.